Welcome back everyone to Pontos Fathom Hobbies. This is our miniature paint through of a Song of Ice and Fire tabletop miniature game, Tully Cavaliers. Uh, taking a look at the basic models here, just kind of zooming in on these. These are really, uh, really nice details. What I like about these models is that they have a very clear uh, set of lines and it's very easy to um, have some highlight colors and get a color palette in place, like wide shield brims, um, large uh, decorative, almost like um, turny kind of uh, horse cloaks and horse uh, bridles, uh, flags, and all of their uh, Tully sigils are there for House Tully. Uh, pretty cool. We got the flag bearer here, the banner bannerman. Nice looking banner. Also great details in the armor. I, I, I found some reference drawings and also the box reference art. So I'm going to kind of do this with a palette of um, uh, sort of a blue gray, a red gray, and a white. Uh, then the horses will be mixed. I'll, I'll do some gray, ho a white horse, a black horse, uh, some, some beige horses as well. And uh, probably do the spearheads in a silver. But yeah, first I'll get a, a, a black prime on these. And I will just go with the black prime. And then we'll just sort of do uh, some base coating and we'll, we'll get into putting the details on these. It says the Tully Cavalier is heavily armed, heavily armored. And with all the speed that cavalry commands, House Tully's Cavaliers are renowned for their devastating charges that can shatter even the toughest enemy line. The mere threat of an imminent charge forces enemy commanders to respond, allowing the Cavalier commander to project force against an enemy line without even engaging. While not meant for a sustained melee, cavaliers are quite capable of disengaging and regrouping, ready for another charge. Care must be taken not to leave them unsupported behind an enemy line, lest they be encircled and taken down, but a wise commander will have troops at the ready to exploit the chaos the Tully cavaliers leave in their wake. So yeah, it'll be cool to get these painted, get them on the desktop. Let's uh, go ahead and start out with the primer. I'll uh, take our last looks at, at them in their raw form. Uh, I will use a flat black primer for this. Uh, and I'm not going to do the Zenithal Prime this time. I'm just going to use the flat black because I'm going to keep the highlights of the uh, on top and then have the, the black undercoat uh, uh, used for the shadows at the bottom of the model. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take advantage of that black undercoat for the shadows. Oh, and as usual here, we're just lay, putting some light coat on this. Uh, just hitting it from the four sides. I did actually have to go back um, after I sprayed these and I had to spray underneath the model. So I had to let them dry, knock them down, uh, spray under the horses. It's, it's tough to spray from above. And then even when you do with these horse type models, there's a lot of under areas that you kind of have to really turn the model upside down. So getting them back on the table, these are dry to the touch now. And we'll start putting on the... Um, Start putting on the base coat. I first I mixed up a just a normal Tamaya blue with a Tamaya uh, a gray, and just used that together to, you know, just got the right tone for that kind of steel blue blue gray kind of tone. I'm gonna hit those with that first, and I'm just gonna work through the color colors. I'll, I'll start out with this one, then I'll make a similar one for the red. Add those red colors in, and then I'll hit the white. So you can see. Uh, and then I kind of varied, you know, armors, one a red armor, a white armor, a blue armor, uh, you know, and then opposite, if they have a white armor, maybe a red cloak, and then the horse has a white um, cloak, and, and so on. So just varying the color palette to make them all seem like a company, but uh, to give the, um, uh, give some coherence to them. And then each one has some diversity, so yeah. Yeah, what I like about these uh, Tully Cavaliers is it's very easy to uh, demarcate like where you're going to put the colors. Like so, there's like really clear straps across the horse, you know, the bridle. There's some re really clear um, areas where the cloaks meet. So it's very easy to get a simple palette like I'm setting up here, and then even just having some ornamentation on the um, the bridle, uh, and then doing some dry brushing across uh, some of the. Uh, effects like you know the swords and the 
um, straps and stirrups and things like that. So yeah, very, uh, very fun to paint, very easy to paint. Recommend these if you want to try doing something ornate like this. Uh, a lot of the other ones, a lot of the other kits I've been doing, I've been really straying more toward batch painting and um, mostly muted palettes. But this one is a, is refreshing to kind of have more of like a tourney style, uh, you know, knights, cavaliers with lances. Uh, it's pretty, pretty, pretty fun. So now that we've got the blue and the reds down, I'm finishing up with the whites across all the minis. Uh, then I'll probably go ahead and hit the uh, horses with their effects. First the horse's coat, and then I'll take care of things like straps and different harnesses, and then look for areas where I've overpainted or oversprayed um, uh, from, from the bristles of the brush and just kind of do some touch-up work. Yeah, I managed to paint all of this pretty much in one evening. So you can see this first base coat. It's looking pretty comprehensive already. Um, I will go back over, do the faces, add some more details. I will add some washes afterwards, and then I'll start working on the horses themselves. You can see I've got one of the horses started in white. I'm going to leave one of the horses black, and then do a couple brown horses. But yeah, you can see this flyover shot going with the colorful armor on the heraldry, on the shields and the, and the flag. I'm going to do a number of uh, coats on the armor and the uh, horses as well. Then I'm going to hit the um, hit some of the face face painting with just a flesh shade, just to grab those details, make the eyes pop out. Probably also will hit the flesh shade on the on the horses as well to kind of give them a wash. Um, helps the details to pop. I'll also do it around things like. Um, some of the components. I don't want to do full washes on these because I want the colors to stay bright. So I'll kind of leave it as it is and I'll just do spot um, washes. I don't want to have washes across the white. Uh, I will do it for the horse's manes, for example, for the horses themselves, uh, the horse's tails, the human faces, things like that. As you guys know, we have a new series out on the channel called uh, Tabletop Miniature Makeover, where we take the old minis that we batch painted and we, we review them. We kind of pan them for, you know, uh, minis that need some touch-ups or minis that need major repaint. I'm already thinking that if I was to repaint these or to miniature makeover these, what I'll probably focus on is trying to get some washes into the armor and then uh, resurfacing the the higher levels with a dry brush but you know maybe that's something for the future but I'm trying to get these on the table so I think this is looking pretty good yeah but check out our miniature makeover you can also check out all of our other song of ice and fire uh, miniature painting we've got a lot of uh, batch paintings so here's our flyover looking pretty good um, kind of a cohesive company I've got the initial washes there. I will do a clear coat on all of these. Uh, but yeah, I kind of like how these have come out. Not bad for an evening, right? This is an evening's paint through. So so we'll kind of pick them up one by one. I used a silver for the face plate on each of the horses. So I kind of gave it an armor look. And I used to use that same silver for the, for the spearheads. I stayed away from the silver armor. I went more with a painted armor this time, so they could really seem like, you know, really stand out as cavaliers. But I did do, use the silver also on the edge of the shield for the metallic look on that. And then, like I mentioned, I only did the washes uh, in selected areas. So kind of stayed away from my usual painting tropes, tried something new. And I'm gonna use a, I'm gonna use a uh, clear coat, not a flat clear, I'm gonna use a glossy clear. I just think it will make them look a little bit more um, satiny and a little bit more uh, uh, silky, something with their kind of tally finery, right? So, so just hitting them with this clear coat, locking all the paint jobs in, and then we'll do some flyovers uh, to uh, give you guys some hero shots. So um, as usual, you guys, check out our bookstore down below in the links. Check out our Patreon if you'd like to support what we're doing here. Um, 
really appreciate everyone who's already on the Patreon. Uh, and as usual, liking and subscribing. Ring the bell and you'll get notified when we get these on the tabletop. Looking forward to putting these on, in play. So we'll leave you with some um, hero shots. Got these on the rotator here. The Lazy Susan. I think I'll bring them, all of them together too in the final shots. This looks like a kind of like a merry-go-round. Uh, we'll leave you guys with this final shot. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like and subscribe if you did. And stay tuned for some upcoming paint throughs. We're going to be doing the High Garden Pikeman next. So thanks for watching. And we'll talk to you in the comments below. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.